Hey, what's going on, everyone? Henry Kaminsky here with another Brand Doctor Podcast episode for you guys. Today, I want to talk about this particular piece of insight that is going to help you build your brand and grow your business. It's called over deliver on everything that you do. And I have a very special guest. Uh, he's been a Facebook friend of mine for years and I had to have him on the show because he is a huge practitioner of this and I am super excited to have John DeWitt with us today. How we doing, John? Hey Henry, I'm super excited to be here and excited to share any information I can to help out uh, the, the brand doctors that are in the group and help them uh, learn how they can optimize their brand and, and really get their message out. I appreciate it, dude. So listen, before we get started, you have quite the background, you have quite the backstory. And so I wanted to just introduce you and sort of have you introduce yourself and, and kind of share with us that backstory so they get an idea of who John DeWitt is. Okay. I uh, started out, I played football. I was a small kid, played football in high school. We won the state championship. I was in Arkansas. And then I walked onto the football team at Vanderbilt University, earned a scholarship after the first semester, even though the, all the coaches and, told, and the other staff told me I was too small and too slow. So I just used that to motivate me to, to prove them all wrong. So scholarship after the first semester. Tried out with the uh, San Francisco 49ers right after I graduated from Vanderbilt. That didn't work out, so then I went back and coached my college, or old high school team and then went to one of those scout camps where you pay like 100 bucks and run for different scouts and get a tape done, a video done and stuff, and got signed three days later by the Houston Oilers. And then they ended up sending me over to Scotland where I won the World League Championships, what they called it at the time, which was awesome. It's the first and only bowl game I ever won. Uh, then played another season there, played arena football, played in the Canadian Football League up in Montreal, played in the XFL even. Um, so I played a lot, a lot of football, 12 years total of football, and then uh, actually went on to, and towards the end of my career, I realized that I wasn't going to be able to play football forever, so I need to figure out another option. My sister was a pharmacist. Her husband's a pharmacist, so I was like, oh, let me look into that, you know, and so I did that for a year in between seasons and just didn't really, didn't really like it. It wasn't my thing, you know, drugging the symptoms and not really making people healthier, but kind of making them sicker. So I uh, said, hey, hey, let me look into the being a chiropractor. So I talked to the team chiropractors and they were just like, you'd be perfect because you're a big guy and uh, you love biology and that kind of stuff. So I went to chiropractic college uh, about a year before I expected to, because I got my ankle blown out uh, the last game. I was playing arena football in Las Vegas. And we were playing, uh, I want to think Indiana, and the guy rolled up on me and just destroyed my ankle. I was like, oh, okay, I guess I'm going to school early. And um, did that and hopped around different practices, trying to figure out my own way, trying to market that, you know, made the mistake that a lot of entrepreneurs do, figured if I throw all the money I can at marketing, then it's got to work. And I was just, it was a bad, no, did not, mm. did not work out well for me. Uh, but then uh, I ended up, I was interviewing during school when I was in chiropractic college, I was interviewing different chiropractors up and down the coast on uh, the West Coast, asking them what they did and, and getting their business cards and their pamphlets and everything, kind of seeing, you know, what people did that worked, what didn't work, kind of getting some research there. I have it all written down in a, in a spreadsheet somewhere, so it's kind of cool. I have to find that sometime. But um, I ended up talking to a guy that I had met during that process and knew that he was just a marketing genius and that it was going to be something that if I could get associated with him, that it was going to be really, really good and put it out there and kept calling him. And he was like, no, we're not taking any associates right now. And uh, eventually he said, okay, we need an associate. And so I came in, turned his YouTube channel from 2000 subscribers to now we're over 360,000 subscribers and we get like 90% of our new patients from YouTube. We actually have, it's about a year and a half wait list for new patients. We can't get people in. If you wanted to come in tomorrow, you just couldn't do it unless you happen to know somebody. And uh, which is unheard of in the chiropractic profession. We see about four or 5,000 people uh, a month. And it's, uh, it's really, really an awesome situation. I also kind of enlightened 
him into how you do uh, self-publishing with Amazon. We even did um, ACX, which is the sister company of Amazon that does the Audible books. If you want to have a book on Audible, you can use it, go through ACX. It's not really a way to, make, way to make a lot of money. I mean, books in general, if it's Kindle books, audio books, uh, print on demand books, those are kind of like, I was, I was telling Henry earlier, those, that's, that's kind of like a business card nowadays. It gives you that kind of that wow factor, like, oh, that's really neat. But it's just an, a way for people to get to know more about you and then whatever else your other services are that you can offer. So uh, now I'm working on my ninth book on uh, stem cells and arthritis and uh, PRP and other types of, of procedures that you can use to help reverse arthritis faster than, than we do uh, just with regular chiropractic adjustments. And what else? Well, doing a bunch well, of that, stuff. That was quite a, that was quite a <laughs> bit. That, <laughs> I think yeah. we have a good understanding now of, of who John is and, and, his, and his entrepreneurial journey. Now, my question though is this. It is, the topic of today's conversation is over delivering in everything that you do. So there's gotta be a reason why you came out on top. The reason why you grew a YouTube channel from 2,000 to 360 something thousand, you know, there's got to be a reason behind all of that. And so I want to really dive in today and talk about this concept of, of over delivering and some ways to do it. I think if you give some tactical ways on how to do it, we were talking about that a little bit offline. Right. And, and the reason why we should do it. So let's, Let's start with the why. Why okay. should someone over deliver on their product or service? Because I just want to, for the record, I want to share with the audience that I think there's so many of us that are afraid to give it all away because then they won't need, they, they won't need us for anything and they won't, they won't, they won't pay us. And it, it's, there's all these things that are going on in our head. Like, Oh, we need to, we need to keep everything bundled up in this nice little tight sealed package, you know? And, and, and right. so let's talk about, let's kill that belief real quick right. by talking about why the importance of over delivering um, should be a, a best practice in your business. Right. Well, that whole mentality of, I don't want to give it all away or I want to, you know, hold it in tight. That comes from a lack mentality, which isn't going to do entrepreneurs any favors, even though it's a little counterintuitive because you feel like, you know, you have to, your, your buck stops with you. You got to, you know, make it, make it happen. But you'll find that if you just deliver what you say you're going to deliver, your customers are going to be like, oh, okay, that's, that's great. I got what it was. It's great information. That's great. But if you over deliver, then they're going to be like, holy mackerel, that is unbelievable. And they're going to be way more inspired to share that with other people. And it's just going to be contagious. People are going to be like, oh my gosh, did you see this? He says he was going to give you like 30 minutes of video and he gave you like two and a half hours of video. It's like, what? Well, that's how does he do that? And what it comes down to, the way that we built the YouTube channel so big is you have to just consistently make videos every single week, sometimes twice a week, sometimes three times a week. You can do long videos, short videos. I mean, some videos are only like three or four minutes long. We had a video that was posted, uh, or actually it was a Facebook Live video that was posted yesterday. And by the end of the day, it had 17,000 views. I mean, it was just, once you build the foundation of all this content, then it brings more and more people in. And it's just, it, it's amazing. So for example, um, I recently purchased some services from a gentleman that said, uh, you know, buy my book and send me the e a copy of your receipt and it'll tell you uh, to go to this website and I'll give you 30 minutes of, of, of video. But it ended up being, it was way more than 30 minutes of video. So, I mean, that obviously is going to make you, like I said before, it's going to make you feel like, wow, he really cares and he's over delivering. He's not just out to get my money. And so, you know, you want to, it's not about, what you give it's what it's how you make your customers feel that's the most important thing because that's what they're going to remember they're not going to even remember oh what exactly was that video a couple of years from now or that you know content they're going to be like wow that guy's really cool if he have if your name happens to come up in a conversation they'll be like yeah you know what i don't even remember what that guy did but he he's a good guy because he really over delivers on, on what he says he's going to do so i would definitely recommend him and and that's just priceless marketing because you can't it's free for one thing and all it takes is the time to make the videos and, and that's the best thing to do is you need to make as much of your content video because what you can do with video is you can repurpose it a million different ways. 
So say you do like a one, one hour video on, on nutrition or something. You're like, okay, well, you can take that, send it to SpeechPad, which is a, a software uh, or a website that'll take the transcripts from that and, and put them down and send them to you in a Word document. So instead of having just a video, you have a transcript of what you said. And you go through and you can edit out the, all the ums and ahs and all that stuff and kind of make it flow. And you can turn that into a book right there. There you go. You got a book. And people are like, but why would they get the book if they have the video? And be like, because everybody doesn't know about the video. And sometimes they like to read it. Sometimes people like to actually have something in their hand and read it instead of just like watching it and doing that. And then you can also take the audible version, the MP3 format of that and turn it into an audio book. Or you can just send it out. I did this with one of my vision books uh, probably a month ago. I you know, I was thinking, okay, I, I, it's a pretty successful book. It's all about how to get rid of your glasses. And I was thinking, okay, why don't I have an audible version of that? Because some people might not be able to read it. And then that way they can just listen to it and it gives them all the things they can do to help with their vision. And, and it was amazing. I made like a thousand dollars, you know, just doing this little one hour long MP3 thing. I sat there and read it into a recorder on my phone with my dogs on the couch one, one day. And it's just one of those things that you think about it. I mean, I've had the book out for a year, for probably two or three years, and I just didn't ever think about that until finally patients kept coming up saying, "Did you have an audible version of that?" I was like, "No." And and then I had now I'm I'm starting to think, okay, I also have to put it a uh, Spanish version, you know, different languages because you have people asking about that as well. So listen to whatever your your group is, whatever your your particular um, demographic is that you're focusing on. Listen to what they're saying. Uh, engage as you know. Henry, you're the best at this, engaging with people on Facebook and, and asking them, okay, what can I do for you? What do you need? Where, what are your pain points? You know, what can I, what can I help you with? Or, and if I don't know how to do it, then I'll do my best to connect you with somebody that can help you, you know, solve that problem. And that's another example of you're over delivering because you're not just saying, oh, I want to keep them all to me. You're like, hey, I'm honest enough to tell you, hey, I, I don't know how to help you with that, but I know some people that might be able to help you with that. Let me connect you with them. And it's just all about being a friendly, nice person trying to help people out. I love, I love, I love what you're saying because you know you want to position yourself as the fiduciary. You want to position yourself as the trusted advisor. Whether they do business with you or not, you should be on the same side of the table as them. It should not be you on one side of the table and them on the other, and it it be like this combative type of relationship. Listen, I raise my hand. When I first started and, and up until, you know, recently, John, like it's been a couple of years now that I finally got to understand this. But when I finally hired a sales coach, because I knew I was struggling with it and they were telling me how you need to position yourself and that's how you should position yourself. That was extremely valuable to me. And instead of me, it, it being a, I win, you lose by you being a client, becoming a client of mine. Now it's a win, win. It's like, I completely look at everything so much differently when it comes to sales. Now, I do want to make a point and, and, and say that I feel like if you just do the bare minimum these days, or, or I should say, if you tell a client that this is what you're going to do and just do that, that's duh. Like, you know, like th that, that's something that that's a standard, like that should be the bare minimum. And I think that if you're not doing that, you'll be out of business. But I think if you're doing that, yeah, that's good. You're actually, you're, you know, you're, 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 you're showing improving and you're, 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 you're delivering on what it is that you say you're delivering on, but there's, there's just a lack of experience. There's that lack of, wow. There's that lack of, you know, uh, would I refer this person to somebody else? Right. And if you're not going above and beyond, then, you know, you might as well just get stuck in the vanilla bin and and just hang out with those guys and so what i do with my clients is i'm constantly trying to find ways and find little tiny little things little little i call them miracle opportunities to man you're you know you're a really good talker you know what if you just put together a quick you know 60 minute video or or and you do it once a week and you invite people in and you, you do it for a hundred people. You try to get a hundred people for the first two months or something like that. You charge maybe 50 bucks a month for that, right? You yeah. love to talk, you would, you know? And so <laughs> the guy goes and does it behind my back. And before you know it, he's got a couple hundred people in the damn group and he's making like nine grand a month 
showing up <laughs> four hours a month. Yeah, that's pretty good. Right? Pretty good. And I'm saying, you know, this is, and this is aside from his, this is just another vertical, another revenue stream for him. It's not what he really does. And so again, it's going above and beyond. And so I just love what you're doing. And I love how you broke it down. And, you know, people look at video as video. They don't know marketing like we know marketing and they don't see the potential like we see it. And that's why they, you know, people hire us. Right. And, and there's so much more to just a video, like you said, transcription. And, and I've recently came out with the brand yourself course. I was dreading putting this course together. And people have been asking me for months for this course. And I was like, oh, I gotta record all these videos. And, and then one day, one of my colleagues, we were just out to lunch. And he goes, dude, you got 800 something videos on your YouTube channel. Go do some homework, find some really good ones, create and, and put the course together with the content that you already have. Yep. And I was like, you, you're effing brilliant, dude. We did, we, so did that same, we did that same thing actually, because we, we had, as we were growing that YouTube channel, I said, you know, how can we monetize this? I said, well, why don't we create a membership site and we'll put the videos, the exact same videos from the YouTube channel, put it on a membership site and then give, give them a little bit more access to us, a little more information, some downloadable like handouts, you know, different, different things. And that grew into, it was, uh, ended up $20 a month and we had over a thousand members uh, with that. And, the, and people are like, why would we pay for the YouTube channel? I'm like, or for the, for the membership site. And I was like, you, you don't have to, if you don't want to, I mean, you can do the, you just watch them on YouTube. That's fine. But if you want a little bit extra connection and email access to us and stuff like that, then you, then you gotta be a part of the membership site. And, and the other thing is, is this, and Pat Flynn actually said this the other day, like a lot of his course content comes from his YouTube channel, right? Yeah. He said he never once had anybody complain about them just going to YouTube and watching it instead of paying the, you know, a couple few hundred dollars for the course, right? right. And he said, listen, they're paying the five, $600 for the convenience of having that in one tight spot, right? And yep. I thought about that for a second. I was like, you know, a lot of the course content inside of my course, yes, it's unlisted. It's, it's not on YouTube. You can't find it. But a lot of, a couple of, a couple of the videos are, right? And I'm like, if you want to go and scour YouTube for hours and, and just get bits and pieces, or do you want the systematic approach right here that I give you step by step, line by line, what's that worth in time, right? Yep. And again, it's delivering. And I love what you said, listening to your audience. I mean, I can't stress this. I just had a podcast right before you, and it was all about connecting on Facebook. And one of the biggest things that she said was, she said, make your content about your people. But how do you do that? You got to freaking know who they are. And I think you guys are doing a hell of a job with that. Uh, and that's why your YouTube is just exploding. So I, I love it. I love it. So I got to be careful of time because I, I have to be, I have to run to the city after this. So um, any sort of other actionable steps that our I, can take? Uh, what you can do is if you don't, if you really don't have a clue, exactly or you think you do but you want to find out for sure what your customers want you can use uh wufu which is a, a questionnaire uh website you can go and you get that and it'll give you a certain number of questions however many questionnaires you know questions you want in this questionnaire and you can email it to your list and if you don't have a list that you might even be able to embed it on your facebook page or something and you can do surveys on your facebook page too mm -hmm. anything you can do to get information from your customers on what you on what they want we did that and uh found out that everybody wanted us to come out with our own version of an anatomy uh, and physiology book. And so that's something that's in the works that we never really thought of because we were like, Oh, I guess people don't know how all that works. Okay. I guess we'll do our version of it. So uh, yeah, that you'll be surprised at what you find out, or it might be something that you thought everybody already knew. And the only way to know is to ask them. And so that's one of the, the that's it. And I'll back you up a thousand percent. And Wufu is a free service. I mean, I think they give you like four or five surveys that you can use for free. And then, yeah. um, then you got to pay for it. But it's so cheap. It's like $14 a month or whatever. I mean, I, yeah. I, I use it uh, yeah. every day. And a lot of my forms and surveys are all embedded with the YouTube platform. So great idea there. And it's so funny. You know, as a kid, I was so mortified to ask questions because I didn't want people to think I was nosy. I didn't want people to think that I was like, uh, you know, uh, 
going past the comfort zone and, and, and like interrogating. But then I thought to myself, like when it comes to business, you know, the more questions that you can ask. And if you could, if you just preface it, like when I'm on sales calls, I always tell my clients like, or prospects, I tell them, listen, in order for me to deliver and help you, uh, you know, build your brand, build your business. Like I, I need to know, I need to get in your head. And with yep. that said, like, I'm going to have to ask a lot of questions. So yep. as long as you're okay with that, you know, we can, you know, you, you want to move forward. Uh, did I ever get anyone that said no? Right. <laughs> Exactly. And that's one of the biggest sales things they always talk about. Once you get that information from them, then you can tailor your, your sales message so that you're actually joining them on a conversation they're already having in their head. And they're like, holy mackerel. And they don't even know why they feel this way, but they're like, wow, he really gets me. And I'm going to do, I'm going to buy whatever he's selling. And, that, and, and so without the questions being asked, you're never going to know you're going to be shooting into the dark. Yep. So again, over delivering, I, I can't stress this enough get out there and if they ask for a foot, give them three yep. and Absolutely. just show that you truly care about your clients and they will respond in ways that you would not believe. And that's it. I mean, at the end of the day, I think in 2018, John, if you're not over delivering, <laughs> you're in trouble. Yep. You're on your way out. You yeah. just don't know it. <laughs> yeah. So I know you got a, some cool things coming up. You're going to be at, you're actually going to be at the NASDAQ. Promoting. Yeah. I'm going to be doing a presentation at NASDAQ about concussions, CTE, and also uh, stem cells and a lot of cool things on the horizon for uh, arthritis. And then, I'm, and then that's at the end of next month. And then in July, I'm actually going to be presenting at uh, Harvard as well on the same, same topic. And I'm coming out with a book on that probably in the next couple of weeks. That's awesome. Is there, is there a place where we can go and check more of you out? Yeah, just drjohndewitt.com. Easy enough. You keep it easy, John. I, I love try. It. I try. <laughs> <laughs> That's another tip for you guys, man. Keep it easy. Yep. John, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show and, and sharing your insight and sharing your value and sharing with us your backstory and how, you know, you never gave up. You kept trucking and here you are, you know, doing amazing things in the chiropractic space and just dedicating your life to helping folks live happier lives and healthier lives. And that says a lot about you, my friend. And I've been, I've been following you now for years. So, you know, just to watch you evolve over the past couple has been very, very inspiring. So I just want to say what's up to that. Um, I appreciate it. Same yeah. to you as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So thanks again for everything that you do real quick guys, before we let go. Um, if you haven't shared this podcast with a friend or a colleague, please do. I thank you in advance for that. If you haven't subscribed to the podcast yet, please do. I will continue to bring you as much heat and value as I possibly can to help you build your business and grow your brand. And that's about it, guys. I'm, I'm off to the city. We're going to have a nice little dinner with the family. And um, for my wife kills me, I got to get going. <laughs> <laughs> so have an awesome day, guys, and I'll catch you on the next episode. 